today's devotional thought and the next one to follow uh, both come from Dr. Richard Taylor. Different thoughts, uh, different times, and different scriptures. But they are clearly related, so that's why I want to keep them together. The first devotional speaks of two levels of purity. Looking in Acts 15. Acts 15 was um, a great council where they really were debating what do we do with the Gentiles flooding into um, the church. Do we make them keep all of Moses' law or is Moses' law fulfilled so that now we're, we're no longer having to um, keep the Mosaic law of food laws and all of that. <clears throat> um, what do we do with these brand new Gentile converts? In the middle of all that debate, Peter made the point and reminded them when he was sent to Cornelius to preach to him very early days of the church. Uh, Cornelius was a Gentile, and while he was preaching to them, um, before they were even baptized, before they were not Jewish, they were not keepers of the Jewish law, they were not, they didn't have all of their males circumcised, they didn't, they ate pork, I am assuming, uh, they did everything that they were not supposed to do under Moses' law, yet God poured his Holy Spirit out upon them. And Peter argued from that. He said, listen, if God poured the Holy Spirit out on these people who weren't keeping anything of the Jewish law, then why are we trying to impose the Jewish law on them after they've also already received what Jesus died on the cross to give them? So <clears throat> on that scripture, there's these thoughts. There's two levels on which we can be purified. And the one is the level of water. The second is the level of fire. The water level is the purging or cleansing of forgiveness. It occurs at the new birth, and it is symbolized by water baptism. Our sins are symbolizes that they're washed away. It's a cleaning up of the outside of our lives and our behavior and our practice of sinning, and that water signifies that my life is cleaned up. <clears throat> but there is a second level of cleansing that is deeper, and it's a, it's a fire kind of cleansing. No longer water, it's fire. Fire signifies a deeper and more thorough inner cleansing, which removes the inherited sinful nature that... that prompted us to sin in the first place and continues a um, quieter uh, and, and more um, erratic prompting to return to sin that the Christian will discover they're grappling with, still remaining in their heart. <clears throat> the birth of the Spirit is water cleansing. The baptism with the Spirit is fire cleansing. We get that from John the Baptist who said, I baptize with water unto repentance, forgiveness of sins. But there's coming one after me, Jesus. He will baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire and burn up the chaff, it says, which is the chaff that's left in my heart, the useless. Really, here's what God does. <clears throat> I give him my heart as a Christian in sanctification, and his fire consumes that which is not usable, but he also purges and purifies that about me which he can use and wants to use, but wants it to be pure. All of those attributes of my personality that he's given me, the gifts he's given me. <clears throat> when the Holy Spirit fell upon the believers on the day of Pentecost, there was no water associated with that. The Spirit fell upon the 120, and they were cleansed in the deeper cleansing. They'd already been baptized. They had been cleansed with water. Now they needed to be cleansed with fire. But as soon as the 3,000 that believed their preaching professed their faith, what did the disciples do? The disciples baptized them with water. There's the water cleansing, symbolizing their lives cleaned up. Then they urged on them to receive the Holy Spirit themselves, which was fire cleansing. And all 
also, when the Holy Spirit fell on the disciples in the upper room, there was no water, as we said. There were tongues of flame on the heads of each of the disciples, signifying with fire the deeper level of purging that we all need. So we all need two kinds of cleaning. We need a cleansing that is signified by water. We need a cleansing that is deeper and more thorough, that is uh, typified and symbolized by <clears throat> fire. It has to be in that order. No one who has had not had the new birth can ever expect to be baptized with the Spirit. I have to be born with the Spirit, then I am baptized with the Spirit. I signify the birth of the Spirit by water, and I symbolize the purging of fire, the cleansing of my heart, um, with that consuming symbol, which is fire. The big problem today we have is not a lot of people get converted. But even those who are soundly saved, we baptize them with water. There's no objection to it. There's no, well, that's strange. Why do we do that? Everyone says, yeah, fine, I'll just get baptized. Yet, the second baptism with fire that Jesus spoke to, virtually nobody seeks it. It's not preached. It's not emphasized. Except John baptizing said, I baptize with water, but you must be baptized with Christ who follows with fire from him, following up on the water cleansing that I, John the Baptist, provide now. We have to have both. We need water baptism and we need fire baptism. May we seek and obtain them.